So there I was, just a mine of my own. <laughs> so I didn't think I was going to get a chance to hunt anything with my bow. Uh, but I just got a, got a squirrel. You're a daisy if you do. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of that? <laughs> I got some flint napping stuff here in this bag. That bag. That bag there, that badger hide, my bag. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll go ahead and skin it with a, make a point, not a point, but just a chip off a blade. That's pretty sweet. Well, that's pretty. Let's see if I can pop a flake off here. See, normally I just slid across the back and pull it, but I want to keep this hide. This is a made the cordage too. I love willow. It's such a neat wood. It's easy to work with. Easy to get the bark off of. What's that? Well, that shelter other than minus the grass and the dirt off out of a willow. A little tree squirrel on a stick. <laughs> We'll go through that hole we just made. Split like that. And up through this one. That 
should help hold it open. Let the heat get to it. Some arrows today, so we got a. This is a chunk of willow. Force drying over the fire and heating up and straightening it out. You can see I've got it pretty, pretty straight. A little bit right here, I still got to do. Show you how I'm doing that. I'm just taking a piece of willow down at the big end, pinky size. Well, I lost three, but I think I can find one. Well, let's see. This will better get them replaced. People think archery's got to be expensive. Shoot these $1,200 bows and Hundred twenty dollar a dozen arrows. Don't get me wrong. I've got a twelve hundred dollar bow and hundred twenty dollar dozen arrows, but. You know, make your own equipment. It's pretty darn, pretty darn neat. Be able to harvest something with something he made. I finally understand why them fly fishermen, you know, they get so much satisfaction out of tying their own ties and their flies, tying their own flies. And going out and catching a fish or something that they had made. Well, it's got to be a lot like taking something with a homemade bow and arrow. I want to match these up pretty decent, the same size, and same length. You can see this one's quite a bit longer, so. Keep whittling into there. That's where the knock will be. I gotta straighten it out. You can see it's got a big old bend in it. We'll heat it up. Bend her back like this and hold it. Keep working it. It wouldn't fly over the darn right there. You want it to be able to spin real smooth. Do we're gonna start force drying this arrow and up there right here is where it's bent and get that getting hot. There it is, 
take it sight down the arrow. It's hot, so. I'm just going to start teasing it straight. Tasty right there. I need to get some more rock. Go up higher. Keep this fireplace about yay tall. Uh, fire's back there kicking towards my toes. I gotta get him in case better. I want to be able to cook this squirrel. This is elk. So yeah, that's elk. I got my compound. It's last hunting season. Really good. One of my favorite meats right there is elk. Love stuff. I got some more up here jerky in. You guys see that? I'll dry that all the way out. Yum, yum, you know you want some. up there. These are two replacement shafts for those arrows that I lost. Got to finish straightening out a little bit. You can see this one right here down the tip's got a little wobble to it yet right here. You just heat them up in the fire. Bend them. Helps you wear a glove. Been raining all night long. Warm that squirrel up. I ate elk last night. Love elk. So you just Warm up the wood. You gotta keep teasing it. These were green shafts when I cut them, and I almost got them dry already. Get it a little bitten and hold it. A little bit of bend right here yet. I got into bow building when I was just a little kid and screwing around, but I never made a real good successful bow until I was 19. I was in the Navy. I came home on leave bow hunting with a good friend of mine, Josh. He was actually my boss in the Navy, and uh, after work, he's my best friend too. We'd go out and shoot bows together, and... Uh, Beautiful, beautiful archer range up in Woodby Island. And I was up there at an EOD unit with him, and we hit it off pretty good. Him and his twin brother Jeremiah. Well, me and Josh, we'd go shoot bows all the time. I'd go fishing quite a bit. With Jeremiah, I'd fish with both of them. Just good, good guys. Now, anyway, we come over to Idaho, and uh, I've been shooting a compound for a little while at that point, and wanted to get back in 
traditional archery and I just couldn't afford a afford a bow. So while we're over here I cut a chunk of U wood and uh, took it back with me and made a English style war bow. I shot it for quite a while. I didn't know anything about back and bows then and um, actually it was still a little too moist when I strung it. I didn't let the wood cure. I just didn't know what I was doing too well, but I, I made a bow and it shot good. I shot it for a long time. And then uh, I made another one, let that wood cure. I stayed up all night long carving that bow. And uh, it was another English war bow style. Stayed up all night, went hiking with a friend of mine looking for elk sheds and this bear uh, got hot. It's weird too, is I used to always have a reoccurring dream that this big brown bear is up on its hind legs come running at me. I turn and run, I fall into a creek, I look back and the bear is on me. Well, I had that dream since I was a kid. And um, anyway, the, the day before I started carving that bow, I was at a hospital appointment with my wife, my firstborn son, was still in her belly and uh, it was a checkup. I was reading this outdoor magazine, Outdoor Life, talking about bear attacks and act all big and everything. Well, I found some elk sheds, got hot that day. So I got down this creek bottom, wetted my head and everything. Started coming out of the creek. Sure enough, I heard this whoo, kind of weird noise. And I looked up and there's this bear standing on his hind legs. He's only like 20 yards from me. Well, when I made eye contact, he'd come down on all fours and charged me. And I waved, like, hey, bear, you know, trying to act big. And I had a quiver with me, a bunch of arrows, and there's eight squirrel arrows and three broadheads. I had a bunch of arrows with me. I was going to try getting a rock chuck with that bow that day. And uh, that bear started circling, swatting the ground, popping his jaw at me. They come around broadside eight paces, and I drew back, and boy, just a shaking, I let that arrow go, and I just thwack. And I hit him pretty far back, I thought, and when I hit him, he ran up a big old yellow pine right, it was right there. So I whipped another arrow up at him, missed him, hit way behind him. Well, I noticed the blood pumping out of his side, so I didn't want to be downhill of it, I was shooting uphill. Didn't want to be downhill of it when it come out of the tree, so I got up got up the hill there and uh well he died, fell out of the tree. Big old, big old black bear, it's brown in color, big big bear, old. Uh anyway, that was a primitive archery kill, the first one. And then the second one was with the same bow. I got a white tailed doe. Now I got this squirrel I'm heating up for breakfast, so um but anyway I gotta replace a couple of arrows that I lost. I've just been working on getting these shafts straightened out and I'll tie sinew around the back here pine pitch it finish the knocks out and then I'll uh, make some fletchings tie them on and get it uh have to nap a couple points. And we'll have two of the three arrows that I lost. The other one I didn't lose. I just stuck it up here. But it's probably reusable. And the point came, the glue popped when the point hit. It's sideways now. But that's what I'll do. I'll tie on them fletchings. Finish the knockout. Got to cut these to the same length too. They're pretty darn close. I got it pretty close. There's our squirrel. Hot. 
smoked it quite a while and just slow cooked it. Look at that steaming. You can't tell me that don't look good. I'll show you my noisy neighbors here. A little chewy. <laughs> Good though. Flip you around. Well, oh, hell, they're flying now. Listen. Noisy neighbors. Rude in the mornings. <laughs> The rain just ain't gonna quit. Oh. There's our dried meat. Oh, the elk. Got my bow. Been up in the smoke. I'm gonna warm it up real quick and get me a piece of that. All left is a little squirrel. I wish it quit raining. I'd get out there and build some more on these walls. But I guess if it don't quit rain, we'll go out there and do it anyway. I got a raincoat. Just didn't really want to go out in the rain. Anyway, oh, look at that. Good morning. Slept on the hides again. Do a little fishing. I like fishing. Get wet doing that too. Fish don't care, they're already wet. <laughs> Not dry yet. To make jerky, you want it to be able to pull apart and crack, and it's still moist. So I'd have to smoke it quite a bit longer, to get it preserved. But it's fine for the eating. Elk, some of the best eating meat you can ever get. Noisy neighbors. Those open up here in just another week or two. It'd be fun to get with a bow. Well, 
Those are the quiet neighbors. Those geese, they're the, they're the loud ones. 